Hi, my name is Alexander Knopp and this is an introduction to combinatorial game theory. In the previous video, we defined P and N positions and we used them to analyze a simple combinatorial game. In this video, we are going to analyze a way more complicated game, however, way more useful. The game we are going to talk about is the, called the game of Nim. In the game of Nim, there are two players and K piles of chips on each turn one player remove some non-zero number of chips from one pile. It is important that you cannot remove zero chips and you cannot remove chips from two piles. Uh, players take turns the player that cannot make a move loses. In other words, it's a combinatorial game in normal play mode. Let's try to consider this game for different k's. So let k to be equal to 1 and the pile has n chips. It is easy to see that if n is equal to 0, so we don't have any pebbles, that's a P position. Similarly, if n is not equal to zero, then we can remove all the chips from this pile and get zero, so we can go to a position. So any other position is an end position. Unfortunately, the case of k equal 2 is already way more complicated. So let k to be equal to be 2 and the piles have M and N chips. Then we claim that if N is equal to M, then it's a P position. Indeed, the strategy for this is very, very simple. Whenever the first player remove some number of chips from one pile, we remove the same number of chips from another pile. In other words, using this strategy, the first player always make the number of chips not equal, and we remove some chips so that these two piles have the same number of chips. In other words, after our move, the situation is always symmetric. The piles have equal number of chips, so at the very end, it, after our move, it would have zero and zero chips, which means that B1. However, if N is not equal to M, it's an N position. Since we can just remove some number of chips from the bigger pile to make them equal and go to a P position. However, for k equal to 3, the station became is way worse. We don't have this nice analysis that we can use like in k equal to 2 or very simple analysis like in k equal to 1. So in the rest of this video, we are going to create a theory that would allow us to study the game of Neum for k equal to 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. To analyze the game of Neum for the number of piles more than 2, 
we will need to talk about the base 2 representation of integers. Recall that any integer can be written like this. So, for example, 7 is the sum of 4, 2, and 1, which are powers of 2. So they are 2 squared plus 2 to 1 plus 2 to 0. And we can write it like this. So it starts from this 0. After that, we have 1. After have this, have the 2, modulo 2. Or, for example, 8 is just 2, 2, 3. So we will write it like this. So in 0 digit, it's 0 because we don't have 2 to 0. In 1 digit, it's also 0 because we don't have 2 to 1. In 2 digit, it's still 0 because we don't have 2 to 2. And finally, in third digit, we have 1 because it has 2 to 3, and so on. So any number can be written like this. And the procedure is very, very simple. You just get, so, so you find the maximal case so that 2 to k is less than n. So in our case it was 4, in this case it's 8 itself. We write base 2 representation of n minus 2 to k and put 1 into a kth digit. So this is a recursive procedure. Let's again try to use these examples with this procedure. So we, we start with 7. We find the maximal power of 2, which is 4, that is less than 7. So we write it, we write the representation for 3. And we repeat the procedure. We find the maximal power of 2, that is less than 3, which is 2. And we subtract it, so we get 1. So now we find the maximal power of 2, which is Less than less or equal than one, which is one itself. So we write like this. After that, we need to set the first digit to be equal to two because we subtracted two here. So we write like this. Finally, we also need to add this, and we say it's one, one, and one, and that's the answer we had here. Another ingredient we need is the notion of the NIM sum. So let A and B be 0 or 1, then A NIM sum B, or it's also known as a XOR operation, is equal to 1 if A is not equal to B and 0 otherwise. Alternatively, if you have two numbers, and and m, some non-negative integers, then n, n, the nim sum of n and m, or nim bitwise xor m, is equal to l, if and only if, and it can be written like this, so a k, etc. a0, m is b, k, etc. b0, and l is a, k, xor, b, k, etc. a0, xor, 
b0. In other words, in order to compute the nim sum of two integers, you write both of them in base 2, and you apply this operation, it's sum modular 2, to each digit of them. So it, that's the reason why it's called bitwise, because 0, 1, they quite often in computer science are called bits, and you apply the separation to every bit of the binary representation of numbers. For example, if n is equal to 7 and m is equal to 8, n can be written, as we discussed before, as 1, 1, 1, 2. m can be written as 1, 0, 0, 0, 2. And first we see a problem. Here we assume that they have the same number of digits, but here this one has 4 and this one has 3. So we noted that we can add 0 at the beginning and it wouldn't change the number. So now both of them have 4. So n bitwise XOR m is equal to 0 XOR 1, which is then not equal, so it's 1. 1 XOR 0, again, it's 1. 1 XOR 0, it's 1. 1 XOR 0 is 1. And this is equal to 15. Using this notion, we can formulate a surprising rule that allows us to determine if a position in 3 pile game of NIM is a p-position or not. So the rule is very simple. We say that the position A, B, C in three, in three pile game of NIM, in other words, you have three piles with A, B, and C chips. It's a P position if and only if the NIM sum of A, B, and C is equal to zero. Proof of this theorem is not that complicated. It's just induction by the sum of A, B, and C. It's clear that a plus b plus c is equal to 0 only if all three of them are 0. In this case, clearly it's a p position because it's a terminal position, and their nim sum is also clearly equal to 0. So let's prove the induction step. So assume uh, we have a, a position A, B, C, their sum is equal to K plus 1. In this case, we have two options. If A, some B, and C is equal to 0, we need to show that it's a P position. In other words, we need to show that all positions we can go are n positions. So consider some position A prime BC that we can go. In other words, we would move something from the first coordinate. Where A prime is less than A. Now we claim that it cannot be a p-position. In other words, by the induction hypothesis, a prime name sum b name sum c 
is equal to zero. But it means that nim sum of all this stuff is equal to a nim sum a prime is and equal to zero, which is possible only if a and a prime are equal. Since we assume that a prime is less than a, we removed something from the first pile. In the second case, we have a, and b, and c such that their nim sum is not equal to zero. So without loss of generality, they are equal to some zeros. After that, one. And after that, we have some r k minus 1, etc. r0. So k is the first digit that is not 0 in the binary representation of the nim sum of a, b, and c. Let's assume that a is equal to a l, etc. A k plus one, one, a k minus one, etc. It's impossible that all three a, b, and c have zero here because in this case their nim sum wouldn't have one here. So without loss of generality, we can assume that one has one in the kth digit. So let a prime be the following number. It's a l, etc. a k plus 1, after that it's 0, and further it's equal to a k minus 1, xor r k minus 1, etc. Okay, first of all, note that a prime is less than a. Indeed, first digits of them are equal, after that a has 1, but a prime has 0. So obviously a prime is strictly less than a. So we can go from a, b, c to a prime, b, c. But it's also pretty easy to see that a prime, b, c is a p-position, since their nim sum is equal to 0. Hence, ABC is an n-position, which finishes the proof of the theorem. In this video, we discuss the game of the nim. And in the next videos, we are going to study how to use the ideas from the analysis of the game of the nim to study many other games. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. See you later.